How are you doing? How are you doing? All right. Let me tell these folks that don't have sound and we'll get started what to do here. If you don't, I need an assistant. If you don't have sound, try leaving and coming back in or check your audio settings. All right. Okay. Hey, everybody. What's up? Can you hear me? Some of you guys can hear me. Hey, Scott. What's up, brother? Y'all can hear me? All right. We're going to have to go. I, I hate to I hate not to be able to help some of those folks that can't hear. But since y'all, most of y'all can hear, I have to assume it's on their end. I get emails after every broadcast. People upset, can't hear, but it's, I don't know what to tell you. You might want to try going to zoom.com and chatting with them and telling them, you know, you can't hear the Zoom webinars and see if they can't troubleshoot with you. Hey, everybody. Good evening. Happy Sunday. Shanice is sick. I'm so sorry to hear that. I hope you get to feeling better, Shanice. It's, it's tough when you're sick. I understand trying to lose weight and you're sick. I hate that. Be praying for you. Hey, what's up, everybody? Stephanie can finally hear. Good, good. Loud and clear. All right, we're going to get started. We're not going to keep you, I don't think. We can't keep you, right? This is a five-minute class or a, an hour class, whatever you guys want to make of it. I'm here to help you. I'm here to try to sow into you, help you lose weight, help you – live a more happy and abundant life. And then if we're, if we're successful, we'll bless the name of the Lord. We wanted to have a huddle up. I'm so sorry to hear that joy. We'll be praying for you. So sorry. God bless you. I appreciate your faithfulness though. I see that comment. Good. Good. We're going to be praying for you. So sorry. Hey everybody. Yes. Kay said for those of you that maybe somebody can type that they can try on Facebook I want to get going. I want to get going. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, so let's get going. We're going to try to keep this short unless you want to make it longer, but you can stay as long as you want to. Look, I just want to sow into you. It's Sunday. It's Sunday. You're getting ready for a new week. I don't know. Hey, Patricia, I don't know. I do not know uh, how, how you fared last week. I don't know. I don't know. I hope that you done your best. I hope that you did your best last week. Who all did their best and had a good week? Anybody? By the way, those of you that are new, my name's Travis Martin. I'm part of you. You're part of me. We're just all trying to travel together and lose weight. I've lost over 100 pounds from off all prescription medications. Been trying to moderate this little program for almost 20 years now. Scott did pretty good. 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 Had a perfect week, Stephanie. That's awesome. Had some folks had a good week. Did we have some folks that didn't fare too well? You you had good intentions. Way to go, Mike. Mike's just getting started. Linda says I'm at a standstill. Some of you had good in, you you had good intentions when you started the week, but life got in the way and it didn't work out for you. Is that anybody here? John did our best. Perfect two weeks. Awesome. Had one holiday. That's good. That's part of the program. You can eat anything you want to one day a week. Not good, but it's my fault. Wendy says, don't beat yourself up, sis. Just let it go. Let it go. Had some folks on vacation. Frida was on vacation. I did wonderful. Blew it today. New Mercy tomorrow. That's part of the program. Did great. Had a holiday today. Six holidays or less a month, you'll still lose weight fast. Sheila's at a standstill. Let's try to fix that tonight. What do y'all say? Lisa's been at a standstill for four weeks. Time keeps on slipping, slipping into the future. Don't y'all love my singing voice? It's awesome, isn't it? Bad week. Had a bad week, but ready to do it this week. Okay. Didn't do great. All right, so we want to get fired up, right? We've got a, we've got a new week before us. You're still breathing. You're still – look, the Bible says this. Let's forget everything that's going on in our life for just a few minutes. Just a few minutes. Let's forget about the trouble. Let's forget about the heartache. Let's forget about all that. Let's just bless the name of the Lord for a minute. Let's just fear God. The Bible says the fear of the Lord, the fear of the Lord 
The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. That's what the Bible says. So let's just respect God for a minute tonight because the Bible says, if he says live, we live. If he says die, we die. It's a fearful thing to fall into, into the hands of the, doesn't say a living God. It says it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the one and only, the living God. So let's just be thankful tonight, regardless of what's going on, that we're still above ground and we have an opportunity to redeem the time. And if we wake up tomorrow, if we, if we wake up tomorrow, we may not wake up tomorrow. We take too much for granted. We take a lot for granted. We take the blessings of the Lord for granted because we want so much more. We ain't never satisfied. And that's good. That's good. People without a vision, they'll perish. You, you don't never need to get too content, right? But here's the thing. There's a lot of people ain't got what we've got today. A lot of people clinging for life somewhere. We've got another opportunity to make things right. We've got another opportunity to get these pounds off and, and live our highest and best, to do our best, to lay our laboring head down at night on our pillow and our sleep be sweet because we've done our best. It's a new opportunity. If you wake up tomorrow, you've got a potentially a new week in front of you. But I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to have to let it all go. Whether you had success in the past, whether you had perceived failure in the past, you're going to have to let it all go. You're going to have to let it go, everybody. You've got a new week in front of you. What are you going to do with this week? Now, of course, the bait, the clickbait is lose up to 10 pounds this week. Can that be done? Absolutely. If you're starting or you're restarting, absolutely it can be done. But that's not what I want for you. I want you to adopt a healthy, reasonable lifestyle that you can live with forever. I want you to get your life back. I want you to quit playing with this thing. Here's the deal. Here's what we got on our heart tonight. Outcomes. Outcomes. This word outcomes is getting us in trouble because we're, we're not thinking this thing through. What makes us all happy? What makes us happy? I'll tell you what makes us happy. The outcomes. We want positive outcomes that benefit us. We want positive outcomes that benefit us. And we're happy when things turn out the way we want them to turn out. We're not happy when things do not turn out the way we want them to turn out. That's just, that's how, that's how things work. That's how it works. If things turn out the way we want them, we're happy, right? But here's, here's the challenge that we're all up against when it comes to food addiction. Here's the challenge that we're all up against when it comes to being overweight. So everything that we do, every choice that we make, is going to eventually have an outcome. So as we're going through the week, we're going to have opportunities to eat stuff we should, opportunities to eat things that we shouldn't. Usually those things that we shouldn't, they taste good. They taste good. And whether it be something sweet, whether it be Dunkin' Donuts, Krispy Kreme Donuts that they bring to work, whether it be going to the Mexican restaurant and having Texas fajita nachos with the nachos and boatloads of cheese, whether it be going to Brewster's ice cream, whatever it is, whatever it is, we don't think it all the way through. We think about, we think really wrong in terms of when we begin to eat it, we feel like that's an outcome, right? It's not an outcome, but we feel like this is an outcome. We're getting this instant gratification. We're getting this pleasure, right? So we can have, in our mind, we can have this outcome right now, and it feels so good and it tastes so good, I gotta have this outcome. But the real outcome is what comes later. When we go through this process of putting this bad junk, this junk food, sweet stuff, soft stuff, whatever it is we ain't supposed to have in our mouth, we're not thinking about the outcome of increased blood sugar, 
pancreas dumping a load of growth hormone in our bloodstream, fat storage hormone. We're not thinking that we're not beginning with the end in mind. We're not, we're not beginning with the end in mind. We're just doing something to get this momentary pleasure. It doesn't give you joy. When you eat unapproved foods, bad for you foods, it might make you happy in a moment, but it's not giving you any type of lasting joy. It's actually leading to your unhappiness. But you're caught in this juxtaposition, right? You're caught between a rock and a hard place because if you don't eat it, it tastes good. If you don't eat it, then in your mind, then the outcome's not good because now you're missing out on a pleasure. You're missing out on a pleasure, but you're not thinking it all the way through. How can it be a pleasure when it ultimately ends up with pain, when it ultimately ends up with regret, when it ultimately ends up with you being on many prescription medications and you not being comfortable in your own skin and you constantly having to think about food and dieting and all that. See, the outcome is never good. It's never good. So when we talk about living a lifestyle, you find a quality lifestyle, okay? I, it doesn't have to be Shibola. If I'm called to help people lose weight. So if I'm called to help you lose weight, I got to give you a plan that works, right? You may find another plan that works for you. My real mission is to help you lose weight. But I, I can't tell you about here's everything you need. Uh, you need to lose weight. You need to lose weight and not give you a plan. So the plan that I've come up with is Shibola. And I believe it's practical, sustainable, fun. If you don't have a program, hey, we got a program for you here. But now you got to do some things this week. You got to drink. <laughs> you got to drink your water. You got to journal. You got to eat in the right food combinations to control insulin. You got to eat in the right portions to control your energy input so that you, you, your body ex, you expends more energy than you're putting in to lose the weight and then you got to spread your meals out to to relax your digestive system you can't be constantly putting wood on the furnace that's not good for the fire either you got to give your body time to digest and then we got to bless the name of the lord the bible says that we should do everything we do even eat we should even commit how we eat unto him because he knows better than we do what the real outcome should be so we, we've got this process that we've got to go through. So we're thinking, I don't want to go through that process. You would go through that process, and you would want to go through that process with great joy and great enthusiasm if you understood what the outcome was going to be. If you understood that the outcome from this is not going to be pain, it's not going to be regret, it's not going to be prescription meds. You're going to get your life back. So even though you might not want to do this, you should find great joy and satisfaction in doing the work so that you get a desired outcome of a more abundant life instead of, an, a, more, uh, instead of a more abundant waistline. It's really that simple. But you've got your outcomes all screwed up. I had all my outcomes screwed up. What do you really want? Maybe you don't know because you haven't done this. By the way, you heard that quote, the pain of daily self-discipline, the pain of daily self-discipline weighs ounces, but the pain of regret weighs a ton. You understand? You may not want to do this, but it's going to give you what you want. You may want to do this, but it's going to give you what you don't want. And you all are old enough now to know that. We're in this together. I'm not sticking my pointy finger out at you. I'm not judging you. I'm trying to shake you right now. Quit laying your head in the lap of Delilah. Stop laying your head. Quit playing with the chimichanga. Quit playing with the moose tracks ice cream. I know you want it to pet your head, but it's going to cut your hair. You're going to get in such a deep rut, you can't get out. And it's, that rut's going to become your grave, brother. That rut's going to become... It, that rut's going to become your grave. This grave is going to be the end of you. You got to reevaluate these outcomes. Why are you struggling? Why are you struggling with the choices that you make because of this? You don't know who you are. What? 
this is offensive. We're, some of us are older than you. How dare you, you young whippersnapper, to tell me that? I'm telling you, you don't know who you are. I'm writing that for me. That's why you can't read it. You don't know who you are. You don't know who you are not. The first thing you need to do before Monday morning is write down who you are. Who you are. I ain't talking about what you see in the mirror, but what? who are you really? What is your true character? Who are you really? Other people might see you one way. Who cares? How do you see yourself? How, do you, how does God see you? Write those things down. Are you more than a conqueror? Can you move mountains with your faith? Who are you? Now, in addition to that, who are you not? Write that down. I'm not fat. I'm not lazy. Travis, I looked in the mirror and I'm pretty big. No, no. Go on and tell the truth in advance, brother. Go on and tell the truth in advance, sister. Go on and write down who you are as you want to be and how God created you to be. Go on and write them things down. I've got character. I've got self-discipline. Look up self-discipline in the dictionary and you see a picture of me. You need to write all that down. You need to know who you are, and you also need to know who you are not. I'm not lazy. I'm not stupid. I am resourceful. I can, I can find time to do this. I'm not going to procrastinate anymore. Write all these things down. Now, here's what you've got to do. Here's what you've got to do, because nobody's going to do it for you. The popo's not going to, the police aren't going to police you. Your spouse probably isn't going to love, I don't mean this ugly. They're not even going to love you enough to stay on you every day. To t Listen, you may have a spouse telling you you need to lose weight because they love you. They, they may love you enough to have a confrontation with you and say, baby, you got to lose weight. We want to live a long life together. We want to be active in our later years and all this. I, I want you to take care of yourself. But daggone it, that very night, if they want to go out to eat, they will eat stuff in front of you that are tempting to you because now they're worried about their outcome. Nobody's going to love you enough to do this for you. Nobody. 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 Nobody cares enough to do it for you. I'm sorry. This is the truth, and it hurts. The only person that's going to do this for you is Jesus. And the only way Jesus can do it for you because you're a free moral agent is you submit your eating behaviors unto him and you eat breakfast for the Father, lunch for the Son, and dinner for the Holy Spirit to get the outcomes that he wants for you instead of the instant gratification outcome. You're going to have to, baby. You're going to have to. you got to stop this. You're self-destructing. You're killing yourself. You need to do this for you and for no other reason. And you know what? By doing it for you and loving on yourself and taking care of yourself, you will actually have more impact in the lives of the people that you do love. You're going to have to start doing this daily. When you figure out who you're supposed to be and who you are not supposed to be, then every day, You're going to have to prioritize that. That's, that's your last problem tonight, is that you've got so much on you, brother. You've got so much on you, sister. Some of you tell everybody everything that's on you, but you still got it on you. It's still weighing you down. Some of you don't tell nobody what you're dealing with. You put a smile on your face, but you're hurting on the inside, and then you get up on Monday, regardless of your personality, and all that stuff still with you, it's still on you, and it because it's screaming at you, it's yelling at you, it's the trick of the devil. The devil's screaming at you and yelling at you with stuff that don't matter as much as what we're talking about tonight. Your health, your well-being, your relationship with yourself, being proud of yourself, being self-confident, having self-esteem so that you can enjoy the good things and tackle the bad things in your life. This is a priority in your life, but it's not yelling at you like the troubles of life, like the trials of life. This isn't yelling at you. It's not screaming at you. I'm here. You've got to do this today. You've got to drink your water. 
You got it. Did you write that down? Did you eat in the right kind? It's not screaming at you. It's not screaming. But all the problems are. So you get caught up in all the problems, and then we lose another week. We lose another day. We lose another week. We lose another month. We lose another year. It keeps happening to you over and over and over again. At some point, you've got to prioritize this. You've got to. You have no choice if you want to live an abundant life that you were meant to live. It don't matter your age. It don't matter your gender. It don't matter about your thyroid condition. It don't matter about your gluten sensitivities. Stop it. Let it go. Just follow the system. Follow the plan. Follow it. You'll be successful. Look, you want to lose up, up to 10 instead of 5 this week? You know what you do? Quit eating at 6 o'clock. Get up in the morning. Have that breakfast if you're hungry. Have that lunch. Have your dinner. Drop them carbs at night. Have the carbs with the right combination during the day. But at night, drop them off. Stop eating at 6. Have that 12-hour fast from 6 p.m. to at least, at least 6 a.m. the next day. I'm telling you, if you're not grazing between meals and you do this under the Lord, you'll lose weight twice as fast. Now, there was a sister that got mad at me earlier in the week, and for many reasons, she called me reprehensible. Let me tell you why. One, just one of the reasons she called me reprehensible. You want to hear them all? I said I'd let it go. I'm not letting it go. But she said, you're reprehensible. Another reason she called me reprehensible, you know why? Because she says, I make false claims. She's Christian, and I make false claims. The false claim, part of it was me saying that God is in this program, that God is in the program. That's a false claim, she says. I don't know the mind of the Lord, but what kind of man am I to go forward with something without faith and to think that my God is not in this. I believe my God is in this. I believe all the results that you all have had is in him. And when I say this, she says it's a false claim. If you'll do it unto the Lord, the Lord will help you. That makes me reprehensible. For me to say that your weight loss results will speed up, you'll do good scientifically speaking, just following the program, if you don't believe in God, it's science. God is faithful, and God's the one that made Mother Nature. He made your body. This is the way it works. It doesn't matter if you're a believer or not. But I'll tell you this. My God is the God of exponents. He exponentially speeds things up when you do it unto him. He'll bless you. The Bible says if you draw nigh to him, He'll draw nigh to you. And here's part of it. Here's part of it, brother. Here's part of it, sister. Here's what he means. You know, the Bible says that unto the Lord a day's like a thousand years and a thousand years like a day. If you get into this, it may take you the same time, but it won't feel like it. If you get into it, you get fired up about it, and you're going for the outcome that God wants for your life instead of every day getting up. Pure drudgery. I hate doing this, but I've got to do it. I don't want to do it, but I've got to do it. I'm so confused. I'm so frustrated. I'm this, I'm that. Every, every day will seem like a thousand years. You'll feel like even when you're making progress, you ain't making no progress. Every day, just like it's forever. But when you start doing it under the Lord and you just totally take the nest tea puns, sugar-free nest tea, you take the plunge and you give yourself all the way over to God. And you eat breakfast for the Father, lunch for the Son, dinner for the Holy Spirit. You eat unto Him. Let me tell you what happens. All of a sudden, now you into it. You're happy. You're doing it. And you know what? A thousand years would seem like one day because you're enjoying it. Some of you, it feels like time is taking forever to lose the weight because you're not enjoying it. Enjoy it. How can you not enjoy great tasting food that you find at your local grocery store? That helps you lose weight, brother. This is easy. You're just going to have to dig down deep. Dig down deep. Have, have one day where you're intermittent fasting. Have another day where you're just having a regular perfect day. Enjoy it. Spice it up. Enjoy it. 
pull out a wow challenge. Do the, do the new buff bait cookie challenge. Have a good time with it. Get fired up. When you lose five, six pounds in one week, do this. Go, bless the name of the Lord. Lord, have mercy. I'm getting my life back. I'm getting to eat. I'm losing the weight. I feel good. I don't care what y'all think. You need, you need to quit losing weight. You're looking sick. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. That's what you got to do. Then you have that week where you do your best and you only lose a half a pound. You go, woo, bless the name of the Lord. Yeah, I'm doing it. You can do this. You've got to get fired up. You've got to change that attitude. You've got to change that attitude. The great gen the, the general of Carthage, I believe his name was Hannibal. Hannibal said, the how-tos don't matter too much when you figure out what your why is, what's your reason. I hope you get fired up. I hope you I hope you don't look past really tomorrow, but I hope for sure you don't look past next week. Just do your best next week. Do your best. Focus on only the meals that you like and love that cause weight loss, that give you the outcome of weight loss. Those long, you know, you, you have those times where you're not supposed to graze. Instead of going, oh, I'm starving to death, make a game out of it. Set your clock, set your watch, and say, well, it's been four hours, but I set my watch, and I said I wasn't going to eat another meal or graze on anything until six hours had surpassed. I can make it. I can do it. I'll embrace the growl. Make it fun and lay your head down each and every night this upcoming week and let you sleep be sweet because you feel accomplished and you feel proud of yourself. Don't put one bite in your mouth that tastes good but leads to an outcome of weight gain. Don't do it. There's too much you can eat. I'm not asking you to eat Nutrisystem meals. I'm not asking you to eat our prepackaged meals. I'm asking you to eat everyday foods just combined a little differently Instead of the old way you had a grilled cheese, you now have it the new way that we teach you. And just watch the fat melt off of your body. And each and every day, bless the name. Even when you don't feel like it, God knows your heart. I believe he's more satisfied, more pleased than ever. When you, when you really are in pain and you don't feel good, you don't feel like belting out a bless the name of the Lord. He knows everything, going, but you do it anyway. Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord at all times in your own weak way. <laughs> any questions, any comments? Amy says, Colossians 3.17, And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Amen. Thank you, Amy. Amy, let, let's get this thing going. Let's get it going. Anybody got anything tonight? Great group tonight. 130 people. So good to connect with you all tonight. Scott's reference in Hebrews 12, 11, one of our favorites. That's a good one, brother. You and I both like that one. It, it serves us well every day to think on it. Good stuff. Any questions, any comments tonight? I hope you know I love you. I hope you know I'm hard on you because I love you. Good. Thanks, Becky. I stepped on the scale this morning, Cindy says, and I had hit my 10%. Lost 10% of her body weight. Amazing. Amazing. Thank you, Elisa. I did record it, Carrie. I did. Thanks, Frida. Thanks, Kay. Anybody got anything? Any questions? Any comments? Wanda says, Pastor preached on freedom today. It was so good. We can have freedom, can't we? Freedom from pain and addiction. If, if the sun sets you free, you're free indeed. That's what the Bible says. Thanks, Kay. Thanks, Lisa. God bless. Thank you, Sheila. All of you. Anybody else? Thanks, Siobhan. We're going to have a great week. I'm going to have a great one myself. I've recommitted to some things today. I let things slip. We're all in the same boat. we got so much on us that we're going to let some things slip from time to time, but we have to evaluate with our nightstand rules. Right, Scott? 
the nightstand rules and reevaluate, edit, try again tomorrow. Don't, don't give up, don't quit until you're proud of yourself. Barbara asks, is it okay not to eat breakfast? Perfectly okay. Don't skip meals to lose weight faster. Don't skip meals, you get up to three meals a day. Don't skip meals to lose weight faster, but listen to your body. If you're not hungry, don't eat it. It'll do us all good to push away from the table some, to give up a meal unto the Lord. Anybody else? Angela, you got our prayers. This is a praying group, Angela Reed. This is a praying group. Y'all can't see her comment because of how her chat's set, but Angela, Angela Reed just asked for prayer. Y'all pray, pray for Angela. This is a praying group. And Angela, um, you can go to our website and there's a prayer corner and you can also, uh, if you believe in the power of prayer, you can list your prayer in the prayer corner and a lot of the uh, website members that don't do Facebook, some of them, they will see that and let you know that they're praying for you and that'll encourage you. Lisa, I've started and restarted so many times. I want this week to be the beginning of the last time I start this journey. I appreciate your prayers. We'll be praying for you. And here's the thing, Lisa. Here's the thing. God bless you, Amy. Here's the thing. I had to start over a lot. The only difference between me and old Travis, me, the difference between me and some of our members that struggle is that I just start over a lot quicker than they do the next day. You know, I start over the next day and that's what you have to do. God bless you, buddy Van Meter, buddy Van Meter. Y'all over 200 pounds lost, I believe. But he's in Florida. He's an over the road truck driver with no excuses and he did it. Yeah. Truck drivers would have a lot of good reasons that it would be hard on them to do this. He does it. He does it. She asked for prayers for her son being deployed overseas. Thank him for his service. God bless Sheila. Thank him for his service on behalf of us. Here we are mumbling and grumbling about food. And you got somebody putting their life in harm's way for us so that we might have freedom to make choices. Got people praying, this is good. Pray for my family, we lost my cousin yesterday. It's a hard time for us, we're Southern Baptists, so there's going to be so much home cooked fattening food, but tonight help me, I won't go near it. Very good, very good. Just focus on what you can have. You know, tonight, um, I, I should, I should have pulled from the fridge and ate, but I didn't have, I didn't have the, I had a great day in the Lord, but my old mind gets in the way and I struggled with some things today and I talked myself into taking myself out to eat. So I went and they had, for, I love fresh fish. And they have fresh fish special, but it came with rice and I love rice. But I said, hold the rice and just give me extra broccoli and cauliflower. It was just as good, it was just as good, but I still had a perfect meal, right? Gonna finish the day with a perfect day. So that's what you gotta do. That's what you gotta do. You know, it would've been, I'd have loved that rice, but I also loved it without the rice. We get FOMO, fear of missing out. Just do the right thing, you'll be blessed. Carrie, um, if you will, just email me because I, I wouldn't be able to look up your password. Um, not from here. Email me at track. If anybody's got anything they need help with, just email me and I'll get you some help. Okay. Pray for Sharon. She's got uh, death in their family too. Live your best, everybody. I love you. It's slowing down here, so I'm going to get out of the way. Start preparing for a, a morning training. I got to go to training in the morning and then get prepared for a work day. So 
I love all of you. Appreciate you. Hope you enjoyed this. Good night, Scott. Thank you. God bless you all. We'll have this uh, video on the website tomorrow. God bless. Y'all have a good night.